All right, it's time to be back in the studio again, my friends, and I'll tell you what. Recently, I've had a ton of comments and PMs come in about a series I did called Grotto Canyon. Grotto Canyon is a scale trail truck series, uh, five-part video series of RC Adventures where my friends and I went into the Canadian outback to uh, film some series with some tent scale RC trucks. Now, a lot of viewers to my channel are fairly new. But for those that aren't, you'll recognize this as uh, my RC four-wheel drive Trail Finder 2. This was a build that I did. It looks a little different right now. I'll get to that. But it was a build that I did uh, in tribute to the Top Gear show in UK, TV show, uh, uh, to kill a Toyota. Hmm? Toyota Hilux. Now, this has been beefed out since that video series, of course. And uh, I might as well explain. These tires, for those who are long-term followers of, of my show, came off of my black uh, Tundra. These are RC four-wheel drive mudslingers. They are 2.2 uh, series rubber. Uh, also, the rims on the inside. I don't remember what kind they are, but also came from the same place. A lot of people have seen the cage on the outside of my truck here. I did not have this made. It was all purchased from uh, RC Four Wheel Drive. I'm just gonna say I'll leave a link uh, to their website in the video description box below in case you wanna go check out their website. Boom! This is the box that I built for the back of my trail finder. See, I made it look all rusty and lots of holes in it and dents and all that kind of neat stuff. In the show, they had lit it on fire and blew up a building with this on top. It fell to the ground. You'll have to check it out. It's pretty cool. But, see I have magnets on the back. This is how I held it on because I had magnets on the frame. I've had this down in Mexico and back California and back and uh, you know this is one of my favorite trucks. Enough commercializing. Let's move on. Okay, so you guys are familiar with this. I've got another trail finder too here. Okay, because I'm getting ready for uh, this season's uh, RC adventures. I got like a, a few things on the go that I, I'd like to show you. And just for giggles, they're all on the parts wall anyway, except for the stuff that's coming down the road. Might as well use the parts cam. That's what, that's what we'll call it today. Okay, so check it out. Here is some 1.55s, uh, that's diameter of the RC four-wheel drive um, rims that I chose. Snorkel, some other ones in case I wanted to do 1.9s. I'd rather do a 1.9 series if I'm going to beef it up. Uh, here is, here, this is what we'll probably do today. We can go over all this stuff at another time. Check it out. Here is, bow, bow, bow. Here, I know you guys want to have a look at the wall. It's been a while. There's some stuff on there. What's in the box? Everybody, hey, isn't this great? This is DJ's the RC Engineer 2012 who helped me with HD Overkill. This is his grandpa's handiwork. Not at RC Four Wheel Drive. This is the highway plow. I finally got it in the studio. I'm excited to use it. But what's this underneath? You're there. This is a cargo truck rack. I got a few things on here. We'll work with it. Boom! <laughs> This is a bumper, okay? On the back, I told them I'd show them the part number for them. This is a bumper, did it even show it? Probably not. Front machined winch bumper for Trail Finder 2, ZS0759. Doesn't matter, once you see it, you'll know what it is anyway. Thing I like about this bumper, and why I chose it, is it actually has a frame mount. Look at this. Now I've used different bumpers from RC Rock Armor, uh, which are fantastic. Pinky has one, my uh, other truck has one on it as well. In fact, Overkill had a Rock Armor bumper, but check this out. It's a guarded bumper for a winch on the front and it even has little toe uh, uh, like hook points where you can put in some Kong hooks, toe points. Okay, uh, so there we go. What does it sound like? Mm. It's metal. Steel. Is it steel? Uh, it doesn't say. It's definitely aluminum, I think. Something like that. But still, I thought it would be cool. So I'm going to go through the whole truck. Now, only because I like the truck, 
and I need two of these and Jem is going to need something to run as well. Uh, I'm looking at a different vehicle for her. I hear a new one is coming out, but we'll see. It's all speculation. Uh, and I figured we might as well do some sort of series on this. So do you want me to change out the bumper for you guys? Some of you guys are working on your RCs right now. So instead of talking, let's do a little bit of unscrewing. Assemble this, see what it looks like. 564 that's what I'm using as a driver. Everybody always asks me, what is this blue handled screwdriver that has all the pieces in the end? This is a factory team driver, just for those who wanna know. Now the neat thing about uh, trucks like this, especially, well, specifically the Trail Finder 2 that I've found, other people might may say differently, is that it's fairly easy to work on. That's what I like about it, especially when I'm out in the field. Uh, if something breaks, I can easily whip around and, for example, just take the bumper right off. <laughs> so with this bumper, assembly is pretty darn easy. Let's line it back up. See, it goes in the channels of the frame right here. Yeah? So we'll make sure it's lined up. If you had a bumper or a winch you wanted to put on there first, pardon me, just a winch, I mean, uh, I would have done that. Get the shackles for the leaf springs to stand up a little bit. I love doing things on camera like this. Come on, get in there. There. Okay. Kaboom. And then the two screws that pulled out. Now, you may ask, where is the body? How, you know, I haven't had a painted body or anything put on here yet. And that's quite on purpose, actually, because mine came with a yellow body. Well, I know that uh, when it was getting scratched, that drug truck that you just saw there, the, the top gear truck, it was perfect because when it looked like rust, the yellow, uh, when it scratched, really came out through the paint, right? But this one, I want a little bit different. What do you think of this? Not bad. Put these uh, Kong hooks on it. I must have a few here. Uh, I do. Check this out. Okay, this is a, not a Kong hook, yeah, King Kong mini toe shackle. Well, there, it's better if you can see it, hey? Look at that. Okay, pretty easy. Kind of accessorizing my own accessories here. Metal, see this little has a little, uh, you probably can't see it right, yeah, you can't. It's got a little tiny pin, you turn it, I'm undoing it. Just want to show you if we can see, get the general idea. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? So the pin actually unthreads from either side. Yes, it is metal. It's not plastic. So I'll we'll undo this. You can see the pin slides out. Hmm, pretty neat, hey? And of course, line it up with the, the uh, shackle point on the bumper. Kaboom. There's one side. It's almost like you just got your first piercing. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to block the shot for you. So we'll leave it like that. I'll fiddle with it while I'm off camera, but you get the general idea. Same with this side. These come in different sizes, by the way. If you want to match them up right, like this one here takes the smaller size with this pin. This is exactly why I got these sizes to show you you want to make sure to get the right one. One of these is the King Kong toe shackle. The other one is the mini toe shackle. So this one is the larger one, if you can see that at all. Yes, you can. Same kind of idea. A little bit easier to get the pin out because it's a little bit larger. But at the same time, you want to make sure to get the right ones to line up either side. Now, I do have the right one right here. This is the mini. We'll just use these needle nose pliers to get in there. Gotta make sure to line up either side or else this can go a little bit more of a challenging uh, route for you. But once you get it threaded, a quick turn. Remember, the more you tighten it, the more it's going to uh, start to bind. But I notice once it gets a little bit uh, broken in, watch this, see? And I kind of loosened it up a little bit. The pin will start to turn with it, with it, which is exactly what I want. Okay, you can kind of see it flashing there. So same on the other side. I've already done that on either side. 
And now you can see with a simple pair of uh, needle nose pliers, you can turn those pins nice and easy. Now you got a, a stable toe point. One of the things that people were saying to me in uh, Summer Love, the video I did with Jem when we went down to uh, California at VidCon, uh, was my back drive shaft had snapped and come undone, especially it was underneath, uh, under some torque, right? I remember I think I was trying to pull Pinky over in a cliff somewhere. <laughs> With a little bit of pressure, the plastic in the drive shaft actually pops free. Just like that, if you can see it right there. That's a good thing in my opinion. Unless you're doing like serious trailing and, and if you're a serious trailing you know, guy, you're gonna know to swap out the drive shafts anyway. But for a beginner, for ease of use, when your tire is under torque and the motor is still trying to spin and the drive shaft, instead of braking or snapping, just kind of pops off, you can pop it back on and away you go. It's a piece of cake. That's exactly what I did in that video, actually. Tons of questions on that all the time. Summer love. That was a great, great fun time. Anyway, but because I am uh, one of the tra trailers, scale trail truck guys that goes out into the rocks and whatnot, I know that drive shafts like this definitely need to be upgraded. I don't mind uh, upgrading drive shafts because I know the amount of torque and pressure that my motors are putting out, especially when this has a two-stage transmission. That's exactly what that middle piece is. Two-stage transmission. Low and a high gear. So if you're in low gear and you've got a low uh, pinion, right, and it's pushing out quite a bit of power, you're gonna probably wanna upgrade to a steel drive shaft. You see how I was stalling while I got it out of the package? <laughs> anyway, I like to try and explain things so people that are new to the show that haven't seen it before get an opportunity to have it fully explained. So, again, uh, this is probably a 1.5 millimeter or a two millimeter, I think it's 1.5. Let's get a zoom in to the uh, actual area and I'll swap out a drive shaft for you so you can see the next upgrade I'd do. Okay, so in the uh, transmission, I'm taking out the drive shaft at the front right now. I'm taking it off of the actual transfer case that they have. And I've already done the front one to show you it's pretty much simple. Normally I would use two grub screws, one on either side, but this one, this drive shaft happens to have a screw that goes right through into the uh, output drive of the transfer case. This is the Punisher shaft. Uh, already has uh, some screws in there, grub screws, set screws, whatever you'd like to call them. I'm just gonna back them off so we can get it onto the uh, drives easily. Probably do that right like so. One of the things I'm gonna do is take out one of the grub screws, which I'll use on the other side so I can actually run this uh, longer set screw all the way through. Come on, get it on there. Needs a little support. And there we go. Snug as a bug in a rug. Okay. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. This is the reality of it. I could use a drill on this, but I actually don't want to do that. I don't want to strip it out. Very important, especially when I'm out on the trail. Now I could have used some blue Loctite on here. Blue Loctite uh, usually would be a good idea, but I don't like to use it on mine. I don't mind if, if my drive shafts come undone once in a while. Just because these set screws, uh, just because of their size, they strip out so easily. Well, I don't know if these ones do, but usually they do. There we go. Go blammo. Uh, we'll set screw number one, and I'll just turn it right there for set screw number two. Be easier if I just went around. 
Yeah, you can see it better there. Okay, so the last thing I'll mention, blue Loctite. How many times have I said that? Blue or red? Uh, they say go red, you'll be dead. That's not true. You can heat it up uh, and it will release, but depends on the piece that you're actually using the Loctite on. This stuff works by drying in the lack of oxygen, which means when you put the screw into the actual threaded uh, hole, uh, it'll actually solidify, right? And it'll actually kind of fill it in. But blue, you can actually back off, which is really good for when you're doing inside of uh, drive shafts and whatnot because sometimes the tendency is for those grub screws to back out. If you guys don't know what grub screws are, it's basically what I showed you and what's in this little baggie. It's not what you think. <laughs> uh, so these are little set screws that I keep. I always keep some handy in my kit bag, especially when I'm going on the trail. You never know when one of these is gonna back out. Even if you have used blue Loctite, things that spin, you know, uh, can break free at any time. Anyway, so there we go. So on the next uh, build video for this, upgrade build video series, whatever, I'm just having fun building my truck. Uh, we'll probably look at doing, what do you want to do, the rims? We could do the rims. We could do some rims and uh, some tires. Do you want to do like a, do you want to do like a, like a, a preview? We can do that quickly. I'm not on a schedule here, but I am going to use the Mickey Thompsons. The Baja Claws, which are much larger. But these are gonna be a great matchup. These are Mickey Thompson uh, rims, okay? Let's see here, officially licensed product. Uh, the Mickey Thompson Classic Lock 1.7 internal beadlock wheel. My 1.55s will fit on this for sure. Just stretch them around a little bit if that's the case. Check this out. Bow, 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 bow. Put one of these, let's take a look at it. Ooh, very pretty, look at this. I'll try, you can see it shining. I'll try to get it to focus on that instead of me. Here, look at, quickly, there. Look how nice that is. Mickey Thompson beadlock wheel, scale. Hey, I like that, that looks pretty awesome. Shall we even try to put it on there for you guys quickly? Oh. This is a preview of what's to come. Make sure you're subscribed.